Hey everyone, I wanted to continue our conversation about embeddings, uh, this time with uh, just a small change. This video should be fairly short. Now, if you haven't had a chance to go over the first video, you really should, because in that video we walk through all the details that I'll be talking about pretty pretty quickly here at a little bit uh, slower pace, and you'll get to see them as they actually progress forward. In today's example, we're just trying to make a change. So we took the tutorial that's standard with PyTorch, which I really like, and I wanted you to try in your own time to shift us from making a multi-class classification, which is what the tutorial encourages you to do, to a binary classification. And I like this because oftentimes we work in binary problems. It's, it's an easy way to frame a problem, at least to get started. And um, it also is a nice way for you to start to test yourself about what you really understand in these components, what would need to change in order for the code to work. So let's get started. We're going to start with exactly the same imports. Most of the time, we're going to be talking about the same things that we saw last week. Uh, the imports, Tensor, um, the PyTorch uh, framework is exactly the same. We're going to be working with a context size that's the same. It's two. You could have chosen two or three or four or even 10 words. Uh, you could have chosen N words, really, to describe whether or not something was an insult or a compliment. But in our case, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to focus just on a context size of two so that we're changing the smallest amount of code that we can in this while still sort of changing the functionality. Then we're going to start thinking about the embedding dimension. Embedding dimension hasn't changed. We're going to take each of the words that we're considering and we're going to press them into a 10-dimensional space. Now for our data, I've made it a little bit easier rather than dealing with something that we have to pre-process, uh, pre which I'm not a big fan of. I prefer to just look at um, code that's, that's already set up so we don't have to think about that. Um, we're using this data set, and the data set has tuples, uh, two values actually in a list in this case. Um, each word has follows and there's either a comment of whether it's an insult or whether it's a compliment. So if someone says you stink, uh, it's an insult. If someone says you amazing, though it's not very good English, uh, it's considered a compliment. So insults are given a value of one and compliments are given a value of zero or even neutral uh, sentences if you wanted to could be given a, a value of zero. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, go through this exactly the same process. We're going to take our vocabulary. The vocabulary is not going to change this, this approach. Instead of having 96 words from the first example, we'll have three. You, stink, and amazing. Those three words. Then we'll build that word to index uh, list, which they did in the first example. Exactly the same. No change here as well. Next, we'll get to the ngram modeler. Now, the ngram modeler, again, is going to import this neural net module from uh, PyTorch, and we'll have an initialization. And the, initial the initialization will take the same values again. It'll take the vocabulary size. In our case, that's three. The embedding dimension, in our case, again, that's 10. And the context size, in our case, that's the same. It's two as well. Next, we'll move on to this embedding dimension. The embedding dimension will take in the vocab size. That's the size of the number of letters. Again, it's three. Embedding dimension is 10. So each of the three words is going to be pressed into a 10-dimensional space. Next, we'll have a linear layer. That linear layer we initialize to take the context size, which is two, times the embeddings, which is 10, so a, a tensor of size 20, and convert it into a tensor of size 128. Next, that linear layer will compress that size 128, and here's the mo first moment we have a change in our code, compresses it down to a space of one. That is, rather than compressing it down to a space of vocab size, of all the possible words that are available, we need to know really just this, this single value that it's, that it's being pressed into. That's all we see for the initialization. Now for the forward, we again will take our inputs, the value that's coming in, the embeds will come in, and they'll come in, we'll press them through that first embedding. We'll look at the output of the linear layer, which we take our embedding, run it through an output, and run it through a relu, exactly the same as last time. And next we'll do the same thing again, take the output of that, and run it through this a linear layer two to create a new output. Now the second change in our code. We'll take the output from that linear layer, and rather than running it through a softmax, we'll run it through a sigmoid. And that sigmoid will generate, I've just even left the, the functions the same, it's not technically the log probabilities, uh, but I've, I've left the value, the variable names the same, this variable, which is storing the output of our sigmoid. So smallest amount, smallest amount of chains possible. In our code, the only thing that we've done is we've moved the size that we're compressing to, the size that we're projecting onto, uh, down to a value of one versus the size of the vocabulary. And now we're using a sigmoid rather than a softmax to do that, to that calculation. Okay, now we'll move on to our losses. Same thing as before. Here's our second change. We're gonna really focus on this binary cross entropy loss. So we're using a binary cross entropy loss to make sure that we're doing things correctly. And then we'll run and initialize our model with the size of the vocab, the embedding dimensions and the context size. We'll run the optimizer in exactly the same way. No change here as well. And then for 10 epochs, we'll run through and we'll generate um, the total loss again We'll take the context and the target out of the data, 
exactly the same as the last time. We'll run our uh, torch model where we take each value that comes out of the context. So each of these words converts them into the word index to generate the tensor. We'll zero out the grad. The grad. We'll then take this model, pass in the context IDs. Again, I've left this log props here just for clarity of code so we don't have to chase down other variable names. Then we'll run our loss function, a loss uh, backwards, an optimizer step, a total loss, and the loss append. And then we finally print out the losses. Things have not changed at all. And this is actually really quite important. We have made three changes to our code, substantive changes. We've changed our output, we've changed our soft mocks, soft max to a sigmoid, and we changed our binary cross entropy loss. And those three changes are enough for us to convert from a binary problem to a multi-class or from a multi-class to a binary. So it works in both directions. Um, I like this example because it introduces this idea that we can start to think about the question that we're really interested in asking. Again, we're very interested in, in um, examples. In this case, it, it seems like in the first NLP example that we're really interested in a sequence prediction problem or a task along those lines. But more often than not, I find these sorts of binary classification problems are more useful in typical industry applications for sort of highly applied work. Sentiment analysis is easy. Um, if you had a list of individuals who were frustrated or who left a company after a period of time, maybe customers um, who stopped working with you, you had the, the transcripts of the emails that they sent in, you could convert their emails into this portion of our tuple, a list of all the words they used uh, in the last email that they sent perhaps before they left, and then a one or zero based on whether or not they would be leaving. This would be a great way to very quickly identify problematic words or uh, per personalities or attitudes that would lead to bad results uh, in terms of your outcome. This, that, the binary classification problem, is someone going, is a customer going to leave or not, is one that we see in a variety of different places under a variety of different conditions, and yet doesn't require nearly the sort of complexity of trying to build up that, that more complicated data structure that we had in our first example. So I like the binary classification, and I think it's actually really helpful because now what we're going to do is we're going to take this example, we're going to take one more step forward in terms of our thought process. We're now not going to think just about uh, embedding a single, a single type of embeddings, we're going to introduce the notion of two embeddings. So the idea here is that you'd like to have both a notion of a speaker and you'd like to have the things that they say. So the thought process here comes from, you know, if I'm talking to one of my friends and I tell them that they stink, that actually might be something that I'm joking about. So if my persona is that I'm, you know, your good friend, you'll hear me rib you and make fun of you quite regularly, I would expect the same. Meanwhile, in the capacity of a professor, if I tell one of my students that, it would be a very, very insulting thing and something that would be inappropriate. So we will start thinking about the idea that we have individual personas or people, who they are in your life, your professor, your friends, your brother, your mother, uh, your sister, and how, whether or not what they say, even though the same, different people are saying the same things, they have different contexts. And we know this is true. Um, we know that there are things you say to your friends that you wouldn't say to your boss uh, and vice versa. But at the same time, what we'd like to do is we'd like to have an embedding space for both the speaker and then we'd like to have an embedding space for the words. And those two different separate embedding spaces are gonna be the sort of the foundation that we move forward as we start to build up some more of the complexities of how you structure PyTorch code. So really the next few, uh, this, this video and the next video will be a little bit more about the conceptual thought process. And once we hit that step, then we're gonna move into building an example that actually looks like final PyTorch code that you might actually use in production uh, with all the sort of bells and whistles. Maybe not all the bells and whistles, but enough of them so that you can have code that, that works in production and, and it uh, seems pretty reasonable for others to come along and work with. Anyway, so get started on that. Uh, try to make try to expand our data set to include a speaker and then the words that they utter and what whether the words are compliments or insults. Remember, you'd like to have maybe five or six examples for each speaker and maybe five or six different speakers. That's a pretty reasonable uh, number to get started with. Speak soon.